Psalm number 103, verse 13, and I'm going to read 13 and 14. It reads like this. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. For he knoweth our frame, he remembereth that we are dust. I want to make reference to the New Inter and International Version and tell you that it, it says it like this, and it adds some meaning. It says, like a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on them that fear him. For he knoweth our frame, he remembereth that we are dust. Happy Father's Day, 2020. Fatherhood, such an important thing, but I want you to understand that as we share this message with you today, it, it relates to everybody under the sound of my voice. It has to do, of course, with the importance of fatherhood, and let me just say that uh, it was so important that the Lord would allow the psalmist David to be inspired to compare the relationship of our heavenly father to the relationship of an earthly father. It says, as a father, that's talking about an a earthly father. And I want to, uh, I got to spend just a minute on that because uh, the term earthly father has kind of, has had some change in the last few years. You know, it's uh, the ideal and the traditional family is uh, daddy, mommy, and children. But if we want to talk about reality and if we want to look at things the way they are, there's not many traditional family units nowadays. However, and, and we know that that's the ideal, but we cannot, we cannot say that, that these uh, children and these young people are hopeless because of the decline in the traditional family. I will not say that because I believe that God has a way of making up the difference. He does that in our lives in every way. We are complete in Him that if there's not a father in the house, and let's be honest about this, that a lot of the problems that we have in this day and age can be traced to the lack of a father of some kind. So we cannot do away with the importance of fatherhood, but we might have to define it a little bit different this now. And as a matter of fact, I wanted to, to entitle this message, Father Figures, because it's, it's more than just biology. Fatherhood is way more than just biology. Don't, do you agree? What I mean is, it's much more than just being the natural donor that caused uh, the child to be born. It's much more than that. And God knows the importance of it, and enough to, like I said, to compare it to his relationship with us. And so nobody's going to get off the hook this morning. Is that all right with y'all? <laughs> we don't need to get off the hook. We need to get on the hook. We don't want to get out of it. We want to do what we can about it. You understand what I'm saying? That though you may not be the biological father of one of these troubled young people, you can make a difference in their life if you carry out the, the plan of God and bless them with what you've been blessed with. So buckle your seatbelts. We're in for a little ride. Father figures. Very important father figures. There's still that great need for fatherhood. And a lot of what you see, I'm going to point it out, and I'm going to tell you the truth about it, that a lot of what you see in the maladies and the rioting and the, the craziness that you're seeing in this world can be traced to the lack of a father figure. And it doesn't matter about the color of the skin. It doesn't matter about any of this. I'm talking about fatherhood. 
I'm talking about something that God established a long time ago that is very important to the life of a young soul. So here we are. We have this uh, thing about fatherhood. And so today I'm going to give you, and briefly, I'm going to give you five things that make a great father. And these five things, if we can do these five things and be these five things, and God has given us everything that we need to be these five things, we will make a difference in the life of these young people. And how important is that? It's so important. I'm telling you that Satan is after our young people. The devil is after the mind of the young because if he can get them, He's, he's really got a toehold in our future and in their future. So we should feel a sense of responsibility because along with our privilege of knowing God, along with our privilege of the great gifts that he pours out on us, and you don't have to look far to see them, that wisdom that he has helped us to attain, that wisdom that he has put within our hearts is a gift to us that we can influence another soul, another young soul that hasn't had as much experience as we have. So what I'm saying is that all we've got to do is step up and be who we are. All we have to do is step up and use what God has given us and we can make a difference in our world. Fatherhood, father figures. The Bible is full of examples of it. And so these five things that we're talking about, number one, the number one thing that, are, that, that is a symbol, that is a sign of a great father is he is a protector. He is a protector. And what I mean by protection is that as these young people come up, they cannot face the same storms that we can face. They have not fought the same battles that we have fought. They have not lived through the same experiences that we have lived through. And it's not all their fault. It's just that they have not lived through these things. But we have. And a protector is somebody that shields them from the wind. That stands in the gap and makes up the hedge. Y'all know how biblical that is? Intercession is very biblical. And intercession is very important when it comes to us making a difference in these lives. In our world. We stand in the gap. And we make up the hedge. And we shield them from the wind. That doesn't mean we can keep them from all of their hurts. That doesn't mean we can keep them from any sorrows, but it means that we stand as a, as a protector. God gives us that. He gives us that as men and as women, as children of God. He gives us the anointing to be a protector. You know, I, when I said that, you should have felt your muscles flinch a little bit. <laughs> you should have pictured yourself drawing the sword. Come on. That's a good feeling. Do it if you need to. That feels good right there. Draw that sword. You've got a sword. You've got it. You've been listening to it for a long time. It's in your heart. He wouldn't ask us to do something that he didn't give us the ability to do. It's a protector. I look at Elijah and Elisha. And oh, I'm fascinated with these two guys and could talk about them for a long time, but I'm not going to. But when you talk about a protector, Elisha followed Elijah. You know, Elisha came, Elijah came by, and I will get their names mixed up, by the way. But Elijah came by and brushed Elisha with that mantle because the Lord was calling Elisha to take Elijah's place. And Elisha dropped the reins of his oxen. He, he, he left everything that he had. He burned his oxen and he began to follow Elijah. And Elijah became a father figure. And I, I'm going to prove that to you in just a minute. Wherever Elijah went, Elisha went. And he followed him. And Elijah even tried to get him to, to stop it sometime. He said, oh no, I'm following you. 
This is how much influence Elijah had on Elisha. And he kept following him. And they finally ended up at the Jordan River. And at the Jordan River, uh, that thing was deep and that thing was wide at that time. And Elijah took that mammal from off of his, the mammal represented the anointing of God. He took that, that anointing of the Lord and he struck the river Jordan and it went here and it went there and they walked across. And as they continued on, Elisha, Elijah figured out that Elisha had his mind made up and he turned to him and said, what do you want? He said, I thought you'd never ask. I want a double portion of your spirit. I'm getting to something here if you'll just stay with me. I want a double portion of your spirit. And as they walked along, you know, Elijah said, if you'll keep your eyes on me, you'll have it. Now, these young people don't understand the fact that if they will keep their eyes on a godly example, then their, their life is going to be a whole lot better. But they don't always know that. But Elisha happened to uh, get a glimpse of that and he kept on watching Elijah and, and the Lord, the, the skies opened and chariots came and Elijah was taken up into the sky in a whirlwind. He was caught up. And Elisha, in his uh, dismay, even knowing that it was going to happen, it had been prophesied that it was going to happen. But this is what he said. When he saw Elijah get taken, and as he watched him, he said, My father, my father, the chariots of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And I've preached that, myth, that, that message so many years and have always said, Oh, he was so confused, he didn't even know what he was saying. I take that back. He was saying, Father, Father, to Elijah. He was a father figure to him and had made that influence on him and Elisha knew what he needed to do. When Elijah was taken up, the mantle which represented the spirit of the Lord came down and it was laying on the ground and Elisha knew what he needed to do because Elijah had told him what he needed to do. Can we as children of God that have had some experience in life Tell these young people what they need to do in the right way. You remember, as a father has compassion, that's the key right there, folks. They'll listen to you if you talk to them with compassion. Even if they act like they're not listening. <laughs> if you speak with compassion and not judgment, Folks, I remember this. I can tell you, I can tell you from experience. I remember a time when I had messed up. I mean to tell you, I had messed up. And I went to my dad and I said, Dad, I have messed up. I felt like the prodigal son who came to his father and said, Father, I have sinned and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. That's what he said. And and <laughs> You know, my dad was old school. I didn't know what I was fixing to get into, but I just needed to talk to him, you know, because I recognized he'd been down the road a ways. He had bought several, he'd been there. He had bought the T-shirt, you know. He knew what was going on. And he spoke with such compassion. And my heart just melted. He, he just said, well, son, you know, we all mess up sometimes. I didn't expect that, but oh, I was so glad to hear it. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm getting to this, folks, that you will be given that opportunity as, as a representative of God to this world that is in so much need. You will be given the opportunity to have and I have fallen short in that area many times, but God knows I don't want to anymore because we don't have time to play games. There's a hurting world out there. And we've got what they need. Let that sink in just a little bit. Because Elijah told Elisha what he needed to do. And Elisha took the mantle up and he walked over to the Jordan and it was, it had come back to
again. And what did Elisha do? Mary, this happened twice. You were talking about the water parting. Twice in that one chapter it parted. He said, where is the Lord God of Elijah? And he knew where he was. And he took that mantle and smote that water. And it went hither and thither. Here and there. Mississippi talk. And he walked across. He's a protector. He shielded him and he taught him. And, and when the time came, the same spirit that, that brought Elijah victory brought Elisha victory. And if we'll take the time to, to let the spirit of God lead us, that we can allow that same spirit to give them victory just like we have victory, it will because it doesn't change. And so there it was. Not only is he a protector, but a good father is a provider. I'm not talking about just cornbread and peas either. I'm not talking about just food. I'm not talking about just money. I'm not talking about just material things. I'm talking about provision. <laughs> I'm talking about wisdom and perspective. A good father has can can impart wisdom and perspective and camaraderie and insight. He can. You're capable of that. God's put it in you. You've got way more of it than you realize sometimes. And if we don't have enough, guess what? God's given us an outlet on that. If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God, the Bible says in James, who giveth to all men liberally. Are we all men? We're not all male, but we're all people. <laughs> and that, that was a... That wasn't a gender-specific prayer. That was everybody. If you lack wisdom on anything, God will give it to you liberally. <coughs> Providing. He has that giving spirit. If we could just have that giving spirit. And that isn't, I mean, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Scripture says that's a giving spirit. If we can have that giving spirit, forget about whether you're going to be taken advantage or not. Sometimes you will. They took advantage of Jesus too. And have a giving spirit. I'm talking about things that will turn the world up right side up, not upside down. It's already upside down. Right side up. If we follow the instructions, if we follow after what God has put in our hearts, it will make a difference. Abraham was a good example of this. When he and Isaac were headed up the, up the mountain, Abraham said, you know, Isaac said, Father, we got the fire and we got the wood, but where's the sacrifice? And Abraham said, God will provide himself a sacrifice. That was, that was a, thousands of years before when Jesus Christ said, you know, Abraham saw my day and rejoiced. That's where Abraham saw the day of Christ because our Father has provided the sacrifice that saves us from everything in Jesus Christ. He's a provider. God wouldn't ask us to be something that he's not. A father doesn't ask a son, a child, to be something that they're not, right? Not only is a provider, but he's also a promoter. He uses the, the, he uses the gifts that God has bestowed on him to make his child look better. I heard a message one time, folks. It was so wonderful from an old preacher. He said, and the title of it was Making My Brother Look Good. If we could have that attitude and have that look, I want to make my brother look good. I want to do things that will enhance his life. I want to do things that will enrich his life. What a wonderful goal to want to enrich somebody's life. And that's what a good father does. That's what a good child of God does. That's why it says, let your speech be always seasoned with salt. I like salt, don't you? I said it before. Seasoned with salt. Let it be gracious. It says 
in the Bible. All we have to do is follow the instructions, and God has given us the ability to do that. He's a promoter. <laughs> I can, when I hear this, I can see the, the dad up in the stands when the, when the boy hits a, hits a base hit. Hey, that's my boy. <laughs> He's a promoter. If he does something good, if that child or that young person does something halfway good, make mention of it. I mean, if he goes to work and completes a day of work, say, good, good job on a, on a day's work. You know, find, find reasons to compliment. Find reasons to build them up. Find reasons. You will. I know they're not always good. <laughs> I know they don't always act right because neither did I. And chances are, now I'm not, I'm just saying neither did you. Am I right? Got a couple of good Baptist nods out of that, you know, maybe a couple of old knees, maybe an amen. Yeah, but God is still God. The prodigal son is a great example of this. He had messed up. Now, think about the story of the prodigal son, and the main character in that, to me, is not necessarily the prodigal son. The main character, to me, is the father. Because the father had mercy. That story would have ended a different way if that father had not had mercy and loved his son. The reason that story is so rich is because that father was forgiving. If we're forgiving, you know, we will enrich. We will change the story in people's lives if we have that same forgiving spirit that the prodigal's father had. So here we are. The next thing that that father is going to be or that representative is going to be is a priest. I told you last Sunday, you're a royal priesthood. That doesn't let, that, that means nobody's off the hook here. What does a priest do? Well, he represents. And I'll tell you another thing the priest does, and this is the key right here. He prays. He, he intercedes, he prays. And I am convinced beyond a shadow of a doubt that if we do more praying, <laughs> we see more changes. If we do more praying for these young people or these people that need to be influenced, we see more changes in them because I'll tell you what that praying does, it changes us. Prayer changes things, but it changes us. And sometimes it's the only thing that can. God has given us the recipe. If my people that are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. You can't get around that. But if you do it, when you pray, God comes and shows them. Just pray for them. That is never just something to say. When we say, we'll pray for you, that's never just something to say. That's something to do, and that's something that will make a difference. <clears throat> and last but not least, That good father, that good representative, that good father figure is a prophet. Now let me explain. Let me explain that one to you. <laughs> he tells them what they can be. He speaks to their destiny and not just their predicament. Because a lot of times... When a person gets in a mess, they really can do much better because they are much better. A good father, a good representative is going to say, you're better than this. It's easy. Just try it. Because you are. 
we have to, you know, and in closing, I want to say this to us as representatives. See, nobody's off the hook right now. We're all on the hook, okay? Don't feel uncomfortable. This is a, this is a challenge to us. Don't, don't even listen to a voice that says you can't make a difference because you can. Did God make a difference in your life? Yes, he did. Well, he can do the same thing in somebody else's life and can use you to, to cause it to happen, to influence. There's, there is somebody in, in our lives, and if there's not, God will put them in our lives that we can mentor and we can disciple and we can influence that we are influencing somebody. You are the salt of the earth. You're the light of the world. That's influence, folks. Those elements make a difference. Light makes a difference. Salt makes a difference. And you are. <laughs> Didn't Jesus say that about us? And you know, we may have had, you may have had some bad experiences in your own life and suffered some very traumatic situations we don't minimize any of that but don't let it be passed on down I'll give you a biblical example of that right quick before I close uh, Jacob's wife Sarah was having trouble in childbirth as a matter of fact she was about to leave this world and she had a child, and in her sorrow, because of her pain and because of her sorrow, she named that child Benoni, which is meaning son of my sorrows. And they came to Jacob, and they told him, uh, here is your child, and his name is Benoni. And Jacob said, oh, no, his name is not Benoni. And y'all might not have even known that this happened, but it did. He said, his name is not Benoni, his name is Benjamin. Everybody ever heard of Benjamin? You know what Benjamin means? It means the son of my strength, of my right hand. So Sarah had fallen prey to labeling her child with her sorrow. And what we've got to do is to stop the generational curse or whatever you want to call it it may not be a curse but to stop the flow is that we got to let God stop it and stand for what is right and influence these young people and these not just young people but they're on my mind a lot right now folks because most of the people that I see that are doing a lot of this damage in our world are fairly young aren't they I mean have you noticed that and I'm not putting down young people. I'm just saying they're not supposed to be able to handle things like them. Now I can say us <laughs> that have lived a while, you know. So be these things and watch. God's going to do a wonderful work. He's going to do a great work. Forget about our insufficiencies. Forget about the voice that says you can't do it and just do it. Just do it and watch God is going to do the work. Let's pray today in closing so I'll just stop, okay? Father, we love you. We thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Lord, we thank you for every man under the sound of my voice right now as this is Father's Day and we recognize their importance. But Lord, not only for every man, but every child of God that can make a difference in the lives of those around us. We ask for your special anointing on them and your protection on them and your help, Lord, as we attempt to be led by you. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for the gifts that you've given, Lord, so that we can make a difference. For it's in the holy and precious and wonderful name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. God bless you. You're dismissed today in the fear of the Lord. Uh, we do have something for the men and ladies, the men today, if you would please.